Welcome back, and so good of you to join me again. All right, the plan for today and this particular video is to upgrade the PowerBook G4. Uh, I did obtain another stick of RAM of one gigabyte since, I, well, I haven't opened it up to look uh, according to System Profiler. Uh, one of the, the RAM slots is empty and it's reporting one, one gig, so we should be able, with its purchase of one stick of RAM, to get it up to its maximum possibility of two gigabytes. And I have decided to take the plunge, taking the machine apart, and installing an SSD. Now, this isn't just any SSD. It's an IDE SSD. Uh, these were made in, in China uh, and were pretty common uh, when SSDs first began to come out uh, for legacy uh, machines that had IDE connections. Uh, so I'm sure this is old stock. One of the things that makes me think that is there's a metal case on it. That is something you just don't often see on newer SSDs. Older ones you will you will certainly see that. Uh, and what this should be really... Oh, some of those pins have gotten bent. Oh dear. Well, we'll, we'll work with that. Um, <clears throat> So what, what, what I would believe is inside this case is a standard SSD uh, with an adapter already built in. Now the reason you need something like this for the PowerBook, of course, is being a typical laptop, things are jammed in very, very closely. You would not have room to put a SATA SSD with a SATA to IDE adapter in there. It's just not going to happen. So, that's the plan for today anyway, and I hope you can join me and have a lot of fun in seeing me hopefully succeed in doing this. All right, so stay tuned. Well, I will tell you, this machine is big and it is heavy for a laptop. Now, I have turned it upside down, as you can see, uh, and this is actually the hinge, so when the display comes up, the display is on the other side, uh, and down at the other end there is where the, the latch is. Uh, it seemed this would be easiest from the standpoint of getting this recorded while, uh, while I'm actually working on it, rather than trying to do things around the tripod. Now, I, I'm not, I'm going to record this in a number of clips. I'm not sure that you really, really need to see me uh, with fast forward video of unscrewing screwdrivers. All right. Uh, to prepare for this, last night, using this uh, SSD, which is in one of those wonderful OWC enclosures, I cloned the installation of Leopard that is on the 80 gig hard drive that's in there. Uh, so hopefully this uh, IDE SSD is going to go in the way it's planned, and I will then simply be able to re-clone uh, the entire installation from this drive. All right. Uh, the, the only tools that are necessary here are uh, small Phillips head screwdriver, Torx T8, nylon spudger. All those are necessary. Now you can see I've got my magnetic uh, screw pad here 
and I have lined up some bottle caps into which I intend to put the screws to try to help to keep them separate. One of the difficulties that I find uh, with this sort of thing is these screws are, are not uniform. They're different kinds of screws. Uh, and they can be different lengths as well, which is most annoying. All right, so let us begin to get started with this. Removing the battery is really quite simple. There's two latches here. The battery pops up and comes right out. Now, let me check to see how well you can see this. Well, you can't really, because the top of the memory compartment is in the way. There are three uh, Phillips screws that hold the memory, the cover to the memory compartment in. Be the first to be removed. They should all be the same. So they all go into one bottle cap as the first screws that I've removed. All right, and we can now simply take off the cover of the memory compartment. Yes, indeed, we see here there is uh, one slot that is completely empty, so we can remove that one dim and put it inside. We'll put it back in. Now, this needed to be done because the ribbon cable that is connecting uh, the keyboard, or maybe it's a trackpad, I'm not sure which, connects here. So, in order to get to the innards of the machine, we'll eventually have to flip it over and take off the top cover with the keyboard on it. So, we don't want to be ripping this out. Uh, so I'll be moving two little clips out of the way, which I have now done, okay, and we can sputter. Get that cable out of the way there. All right, now there are one, two, three, four, five screws up here holding the case on. There are also three more screws down here. And yes, there's a, a couple in here on the uh, memory compartment. All of those are going to have to come out in order to uh, be able to get into the inside of the machine. All right. Now, the other screws will have to come out. There's a series of four screws along each side of the machine that all have to come off. All right, so I will stop this video now since you don't really, you've already seen me unscrew screws. You've seen one screw unscrewed. I think you've probably seen them all. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. Boy, there are a lot of screws to this, but with all those screws removed, we should be able to get off the top of the case. Okay, and yes, we can see here the connector cable which has come out, which is why that had to be removed. All right. Now, here we see the Hitachi Travel Star hard drive. Uh, to get at the hard drive, we do need to detach, this I believe is the sound card cable, 
from the logic board. And we should be able to leave it plugged into the, the sound card. And also, in similar fashion, maybe, this is the hard drive cable. There it comes, there it comes. Okay. So we now have, I believe it's three screws, yes, one, two, three screws. Hmm. Four screws, okay, that need to be removed. Yeah, there are two, there's one down here, two, three, and <laughs> the missing one. <laughs> okay, and these are torque screws. So, again, you do not need to see me unscrewing screws, do you? So we'll be right back, hopefully with the hard drive out. Now, clearly, this machine has been opened before. The fact that one of the screws holding the hard drive in uh, would indicate that. Uh, so, there are brackets along either side that mount this in there. And of course, we need to get the, the cable out. Um, for one of them, I've got to unscrew screws. For the other, I don't. Now, the other thing that makes me think uh, this has been a replacement, there's supposed to be a metallic cover that goes over this hard drive and onto the back here that isn't there. Uh, I, I'm not actually, since I'm installing an SSD, I don't think that cover was particularly important. Then again, the machine was working without it. So again, let me get these things off this hard drive and put on to the SSD. Well, that was quite a pain. Uh, the screws came out from the hard drive, the, the mounting screws for the brackets. Getting them into the SSD, since they're not magnetized, was really quite a pain. But we have each mounting bracket properly attached on the side. We have the IDE ribbon cable. So, Next will be, we screw the hard drive in to its place. Well, the SSD replacing the hard drive, uh, right where it was. Reconnect the SSD's cable. Reconnect the sound card. And then reattach the top uh, with the keyboard making sure that that cable to connect it uh, underneath the memory compartment does slide through that opening so that it can be reconnected on the other side. And again, I really don't think you need to watch all of this. So we may get little clips in here uh, showing intermediate progress. Well, the interim report here the hard drive is screwed in. I made an executive decision. Uh, the missing screw had been here, so it was screwed in here, here, and here. So I, my executive decision was to screw the drive in place here and here so that it's across, and then here. Since I, I have no idea what it would be like to get uh, a screw to replace that. Uh, we have connected both of those ribbon cables, so that should work. Now I just need to put the, uh, the keyboard back on. It's going to be a little bit hard for you to see any of that anyway, uh, but I will do it, making sure to feed that cable through there. So 
we'll see in just a bit. All right, I think we're in pretty good shape here. Uh, I've installed both dims of the memory. Uh, the slightly scary thing, when I turn the machine back over, having screwed in the sides again, there's a little plastic retaining clip that holds the keyboard cable in place uh, that had fallen out. It wasn't supposed to, but it seemed like it went back in with no great problem. So what I need to do now, screw the memory compartment back in, put back these screws, then put the battery back in and see if it boots up. Okay, this is put together at this point. I've screwed everything back in, but one further bit of proof that this has been opened before and work is done to it. Uh, this screw here, there is a magnetized bit of the latch. You can see how the screwdriver is actually catching on that. When I pull this screw out, as it came up, that magnet was strong enough to just pull the screw right off the screwdriver and it was caught. Now I could see it there. I've got my handy little needle those pliers here. I was able to grab it, no problem. In putting it back together, uh, yeah, the, the magnets here and here are not an issue. It's only this one over here. In putting it back together, much the same thing happened. In fact, to put that screw in, I had to grab onto it with the pliers, hold it in place, put the screwdriver into the appropriate socket there, and then I was able to screw it in. But when I was getting that screw out with the pliers from the magnet for the second time, I noticed there was another screw in there. Not only was there a second screw in there, but one of the other screws right there was different than all of the others. So whoever had taken it apart had lost one of the screws, evidently couldn't find it, didn't know where it was, and substituted another similar but not exactly right screw. So now we have all three of those screws, and the only missing screw is the one holding the SSD in place. So I'm going to put the battery back in, and we're going to try to boot it up. Now our desired uh, outcome from booting it up will be uh, the folder with the flashing question mark because of course there's nothing on this drive. In fact, I don't think it's even formatted. Uh, that's okay. Uh, assuming we get that, which will indicate that the machine is working, then you know I can go about restoring the operating system and all should be good. So hang on a sec and we will do just that. It will stay handheld here. This shouldn't hopefully take very long. Well, we got a, a startup chime. That's a good sign. We have video and there's our question mark icon. All right, so we should be working at this point. So I will power it down. And when we wrap this up, I will have restored, it's gonna take a little while, but I will have restored the operating system from the cloned drive. Uh, fortunately, we can boot up from Firewire, so I can just boot up into that cloned drive, use Carbon Copy Cloner, uh, well, after I have first uh, formatted this drive, because I'm sure it isn't by some miracle in Mac format. Uh, but we'll get all of that done, and then we will show you the end result. I guess nothing is ever completely easy. This had been going too well up to now. That's the enclosure with the SSD onto which I had cloned this version of Leopard. It's not being detected in the boot manager. 
Now, I really, really, really should have tested that before I took that 80 gig hard drive out. I am not about to go through all of this again. Uh, to put that drive back in here since I have, I have no other way really of mounting that particular drive. So that means clean install of Leopard and set the whole thing up again, which is not the worst thing in the world. You know, when you basically can't leave the, the house, it gives me something to do. Now, if you folks have been watching my videos at all, you've seen more than enough video of me installing Leopard on various uh, machines. Hadn't really intended to do it here, but I will do it and then we'll just show you what the end result is. Okay. Positive proof. It is possible to skip checking the disk. And I further realize, in this day and age, we should always take the opportunity to see a welcome video. this means I'm going to have to spend uh, my whole evening setting up this, this computer again. Actually, I'll probably do it tomorrow. I'll spend the whole evening editing videos. Okay. And we're not off the the optical drive anymore, so we should come up pretty quickly. Okay. One of the things, one of the negative things about this machine, the right speaker is not working. I checked the connections, so I'd hope that maybe it would start working. But though, okay, you certainly don't need to uh, see me go through setting up this whole thing again, but I, I thought I would treat you at least to the welcome video. And here we are on the desktop after successful installation. Uh, I've got a lot of work to do here in setting this up. First of all, just a ton of software updates uh, and then some installation of apps. So I'm going to leave it at this, but anyhow, thank you so much for your attention. I am glad for spent this time with you. Be good to other people. And most of all, be good to yourselves. Take good care.